God's grace and mercy and peace be among us. Today we ask ourselves a question. Why is God doing what he's doing? Why are there changes in my life? Why are there changes that, well, don't seem to be for the good, but, but for the bad? Why is this all going on? Well, it's a, it's a good question, and it's relevant for everyone in the congregation at some point in their life will suddenly and unexpectedly experience change. Change for a day, change for a week, maybe change for a whole lifetime. There's an old Peanuts cartoon. It's, it's an interesting one. In the first panel, Charlie Brown says, I learned something in school today. I signed up for folk guitar lessons, computer programming, stained glass art, and a natural foods workshop. Wow, that sounds interesting, his friend said. But in the next panel, Charlie says, but even though I signed up for those things, I ended up getting spelling, history, math, and two study halls. What we think we're signing up for, we don't always receive. Charlie says, I learned that what you sign up for and what you get are two different things. Well, welcome to life. Charlie Brown, what you sign up for and what you get are often very different. So how do you respond to the unexpected disappointments of life? to a sudden change in your plans. How do you respond? Well, in large part, depend on your trust in God, your commitment to have him be the one who leads you through life, to let him do what he does well and work the best in you. David Watson, a pastor and university professor in Minnesota, writes about a time when he was serving as a pastor in Springfield, Missouri. It was a typical busy day for him. He had meetings to attend. He had a Bible study to prepare. He had parishioners who needed visits as well. But as he was driving in between meetings and all those other places, he got this, well, urge to stop at the at the, at the hospital that was on the way. He wasn't sure why he got that urge, but it definitely was an urge. And so he pulled into the hospital parking lot, went into the desk and asked, had any of his members come into the hospital that day? Well, behind him was a man sitting in a chair. He heard the conversation and he went up to pastor and said, there was a lady this morning as I was cleaning her room who said, I need to hear Pastor Watson from the radio program. If I do, I know that God will be with me. Well, Pastor Watson went down to her room. She was amazed that he had come, but she felt indeed that God had truly answered her prayer and done so in person. We don't always get those kinds of answers when we're asking God in prayer. But God is always listening and is doing those things that will bring us where we need to be. Strengthening us, helping us, lifting us up, just walking hand in hand with us. When difficult things happen, God will always be there. He might change our plans. He might change the timing of the things that happen in our life, but he will always be doing so for our best interest. Paul and Silas, excuse me, <coughs> Paul and Silas discovered that God can sometimes do his work by stopping you altogether. They were on their way with Timothy to go to do some missionary work when God stopped them and said, no, I want you to go to a different place. They listened 
and their work was important. They went to Philippi, and even when they got to Philippi, things changed. They were used to going to oh, a synagogue if it was in town, or a place where some of the men in town led, uh, joined together to read or to share ideas. But when they got there, the only person who showed any sense of being religious were a small group of women who met bound by the river. Paul was led to them, and they, were at, they asked him to stay with them and teach them. And Paul did so, and the waters of the river proved to be the waters for baptism. God just does that. He works in his own way, sometimes surprising us with a ministry we had not thought about before. Anne Graham Lotz, the daughter of Billy Graham, once wrote that when she faces a difficult situation or a closed door, she doesn't ask God why, but she asks God, what are you trying to teach me through all of this, Lord? Are we open to letting the Lord teach us? What can we learn from a hurricane in a different part of the country or storms and disasters in other parts of the world? Are we led to ask ourselves how fortunate we are? Are we led to say, I have more than enough I can share with others? God is always growing us up to be his servants. And it can happen in the middle of life. Roger Graham was a police officer. He loved doing police work there in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where he grew up. He served as an officer for 14 years. And then one day, as he was doing some Bible study, he was touched by the idea of going and doing work himself for the church, to hear the call of God. And so, in his mid-40s to early 50s, he and his family moved to the seminary, where they studied in there for three years, or did a vicarage, and then was sent out to a church. He served the next 20 some years sharing what the Lord meant to him and how it changed his life. God can do that, maybe not as dramatic as changing our profession, but God can wake us up. God can open our eyes so that we can see what we've been missing. Maybe we've been in a congregation like this one for 30, 40, 50 years or more but only now start to see some possibilities for what God could do here. <coughs> Excuse me. Dr. Albert Day in his book about Christians, and especially those who were suffering, writes that it is important for people to look so far ahead if we have a meal for that day, for that moment, then we can be thankful. We don't have to always have enough for weeks and months ahead, but to give thanks daily for what God is doing in our lives. Yes, God works in diff di distinctively different ways, and not the same way in every person. To some persons, he gives strength physically, to others strength me mentally. To others he gives just the ability to be a good listener, to be a friendly person, someone you can talk to who will listen. God works in all of us in our own way and he helps us to grow in the way that he has called us to be. God does his greatest work just through ordinary people. He does it through people like you and me. If we believe that, we will live in a constant hope and expectation of joy. God places his greatest opportunities right in front of us 
in the ordinary circumstances of our daily lives. What about you? What are you expecting of God today? What are you expecting of God next week, next year, in the years to come? Are you open? Are you ready? Do you have your hand there so that he can grasp it and walk with you? God answers the question, why? Why is things happening in our lives? With the, well, behavior of taking us by hand and walking us through it. May God walk, through, walk with you through your life today and every day. Amen. Now, truly, the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in faith 